boil and I'm quitting alcohol. I joined jujitsu today. Desperate times call for desperate measures. This is not the time to be sitting around contemplating. This is the time for action. I've been thinking about doing jujitsu again for the last five years and haven't got off my ass to fucking do it. Now's the time. It's always been in the back of my head gnawing away. You should really start jujitsu again, you fucking loser. Do you even know how to do an arm bar anymore, you loser? I never really knew how to do an arm bar, but now I will. Because when the chips are down, you don't stand around, you get out there. You desperately try and make some fucking changes. That's what you do. So I start jujitsu on Thursday, and it's also fucking Muay Thai. There's an hour kickboxing class followed by an hour jujitsu, which is perfect. That, I assume, is going to help me excrete some of my fucking built-up anger. And if not, at the very least, it will give me some confidence going into some road rage fights. I won't even need to go directly for the tire iron. So that's on the cards. Jiu-Jitsu Thursday. Tomorrow, I'm going to buy a piano because that's been gnawing away at me as well. Why didn't you continue with the piano? Just spend 20 minutes a day on the fucking piano, you lazy piece of shit. How long do you spend on your phone a day? Be honest fucking like three hours doing nothing don't use there's not enough time in the day as an excuse when you spend three hours a day fucking scrolling through your phone ignoring your family so i've got the jujitsu happening i've got the piano coming back i'm fucking reading some buddhist texts right now just before i started usually i spend like an hour and a half scrolling through my fucking phone before i start this podcast just trying to avoid starting But today, fucking, what is it? New me? Instead of scrolling through my phone, I'm reading An Introduction to Buddhism and Tantric Meditation by the Dalai Lama. This is how you fight your way out of a funk. You desperately... (laughs) You desperately try and cram all the things you've been meaning to do for the past 30 years into one week. And then what eventually happens is you bite off more than you can chew and you stop doing all of them and you end up in exactly the same place you were before. Not doing piano, not doing jujitsu, not writing, not fucking reading about tantra fucking meditation. Just back on the phone doom scrolling. Here's the problem with Buddhism for me. Like there's nothing wrong with like the scripture and the teachings and shit like that, obviously. The problem for me is... I know that following the teachings of Buddhism is really the only way to fucking counteract the suffering of the world. There is no possible way you can do it materialistically. It just doesn't work. Any way you play it out. So when you know something like that, it sort of makes striving for any sort of like material gains redundant. Like, why would you be striving directly for that? So, really, to stay motivated about the things you're doing, you have to fucking choose a different reason to do them. Like, instead of, I want to be rich and famous, you got to be like, I want to help people. I want to do everything I can to help people. Anyway, that isn't the fucking main problem with Buddhism for me. It's one of the main problems, but it is secondary to the fact that in Buddhism, and really... In life, you have to be a good person. That seems to be the only real antidote to suffering is be a good person. Don't fucking lie. Watch your fucking words. Be mindful of everything you do. Care for other people. Care for everyone. And all those things, while great, they're not really compatible with a podcast (laughs) where I mainly just call people cunts. It's not really compatible with a fuck Adrian t-shirt. But at some point, I know I'm going to have to transition to like a good person. Like I'm going to have to give being a good person my all at some stage. I'm going to have to devote my life to being a good person at some stage. I'm not ready for that right now. That is going to be like giving up drinking again the intoxication of evil doings that's what i'll have to give up eventually it's going to happen it's inevitable i'll just continue to get stuck in these cycles where i end up in some fucking form of despair 
And like the process of quitting drinking, it's going to be the same thing with becoming a good person. Does that even make sense? It makes sense to me. Anyway, don't fret. I'm just going to be a little bit better person at the moment. It's a gradual process to become holy. Anyway, I was too fucking depressed yesterday to do the Ask Boyle, so let's get to this week's Ask Boyle. So this week's Ask Boyle was sent in by my lass Claire out there in the fucking UK. And Claire has a very interesting question this week. Claire asked this. What should a lady do when dealing with long-term erectile dysfunction? Well, Claire, you have come to the right place. And you really have come to the right place, Claire. Erectile dysfunction is just another area I am an absolute fucking expert in. You don't do as much drinking as I did over the years and not end up with a fucking floppy a few times against your will. I reckon I bombed at least 20 shags just from fucking being too drunk. At least. And I'd be like, hey, uh, yeah, this um, never really happened. <laughs> this doesn't really ever happen. Except for the last 15 times I tried to fuck. Is that even really helpful to a girl? This never happens. Usually I'm raging, but I don't know. There's something about you and this situation that is just really turning me off. So erectile Erectile dysfunction. Look, it goes away if you stop drinking, you start eating healthy, and you exercise. If your heart is strong enough to be able to pump some blood into that area, you're going to be all right. I think for like 10, 15 years there, my blood was like maple syrup. It just wasn't pumping around properly. Hold on, she actually says down the bottom, it's premature ejaculation is the issue, not boners. The boners are solid. Well, you could have saved me a little bit of embarrassment there, but I just happen to be an expert on this one too. There's no cure and there's nothing you can do about it. I've tried everything. Everything. No, I actually do know what to do here. Fuck on acid. That's what you do. Get a tab of acid each and then just fucking go to town. It will help rewire his brains. Either acid or mushrooms. Either one. It will rewire his brains and fucking on acid is... It's an experience. It's a spiritual experience. He'll be more in the moment. He'll be more involved. Half the problem with fucking jizzing early is it's like getting the yips in golf. It's in your head. And also, sometimes you just can't be bothered. Once you get out of your head, i.e. with a little bit of fucking acid, then it fucking sort of takes care of itself. Just do that. Follow my advice there. Fucking on acid is a spiritual fucking experience. It should be done at least once in a lifetime. And naturally, it will sort you out. Trust me. It will. Anyway, fucking Claire, I hope that helps. Thank me later. That'll do for tonight. If you're enjoying the podcast, share it around, and I'll see you the fuck later.